Cathedral of St. Matthew the Apostle on this Easter Sunday as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. We ask that you please follow the directions of the guides, wear your mask, keep social distance, and sing only in your hearts, not out loud. Leading us in our celebration this morning is Cardinal Gregory, Archbishop of Washington. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the heart, I wish all of you a very, very happy Easter. As we gather this day to celebrate with the Church Universal the great gift of God's risen Son, to prepare our hearts to do those things, let us pause and ask for the Father's merciful forgiveness. 
Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlo unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day 
and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. 
brothers and sisters. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, the Easter liturgy invites us to listen to stories that only genuine faith could possibly accept as true. We journey back to that first Easter morn each year in God's word during the Easter celebration. This narrative can only make sense to people who believe. The Easter story may simply be nonsense to all others who do not share a faith which is itself a gift from God. Even for those with faith, there are many moments when we are just like those first apostles upon hearing of the early morning encounter of the women at the tomb. And we want simply to comment, this story seems like nonsense. Empty tombs, heavy stones that have been rolled aside, burial garments that are neatly folded, and white-robed visitors who speak about the risen one. It does seem like nonsense when we first hear it. Broadcast and social media have recently introduced an editorial tool they often refer to as the truthometer that is intended to gauge the veracity of the statements of public or political figures. They use this instrument to measure if a statement is really factual. No doubt, if the resurrection story, as it is told in the Gospels, were to be subjected to such a media index, it might not score too well. But consider with me, for just a moment, 
what you and I ordinarily take as quite reasonable and very credible, that acquiring a lot of money and great influence will bring you real happiness, that there, is, there are no standards for a healthy family life that is required for the successful rearing of children, that our increased rationalizations for the use of violence and weapons as a solution to our problems will bring about peace, that the irreconcilable differences that separate the nations of the world is unavoidable, that the hostility among the sexes, cultures, races, and communities of a diverse community are inescapable. Routinely do we accept these kinds of premises and many others like them as the real truth and as the determining factors for our lives. What seems like more nonsense, the fact that God has raised his son to life or that the folly of our human ways that results in greater and greater distances from one another and from God. Today is not about nonsense, but about truth. What the women said to the apostles on the dawn of that first Easter is the greatest message that the human heart could ever hope to hear. It was the truth that we are not meant to live in isolation, that death is not our final sentence, that life has been restored and lasting sorrow is not the way that God determined for any of us to live. The real nonsense is that we continue to live in fear and in rage. Nonsense is the blind ambition that drives far too many of us. Nonsense is the suspicion that we cling to rather than the openness for which the human heart was fashioned. Nonsense is the national division and the racial polarizations that are still often the hallmark of our era. No, today is not about nonsense, but about reality. The women who first witnessed the risen Christ came to the apostles and spoke the most profound wisdom that they had ever heard. Maybe they too were so consumed with the issues of their own times and with the sorrow that then filled their hearts and the doubts that they obviously still entertained that they thought that what they said was like nonsense. Today stands as the decisive moment in the midst of a world of nonsense that on this morning is revealed for what it actually is. Nonsense. Our new Catholic brothers and sisters are a remarkable sign of God's truth in our presence, and in our midst. And we welcome them as our beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. If you happen to run into any of our new Catholics during this next week or so, go up to them and say, welcome. We're so glad to have you as a part of our family. We welcome you, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. And that you remind us all of the truth of our faith and you bring great joy to our hearts. May this Easter season, dear friends, bring you and all of your loved ones great happiness and peace. May the real truth that believers speak about and witness on this day 
illumine all of our days and all of our hearts with the light of Christ. What the women said to the disciples was the truth and what too many of us continue to pursue in our own lives is nonsense. Let's get it right. Dearest brothers and sisters in the Lord, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we might walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I now ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. I do. And all his empty show? I do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life.
May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. In the Easter mystery, God has recreated our world in joy, peace, hope, and light. Let us now offer our prayers to God. That the joy of the risen Christ may inspire our parish community to proclaim in our work and worship the good news of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the hope of the risen Christ may console the troubled, reconcile those who are estranged and alienated, and heal the hurting, suffering, and sick among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders might be open to the wisdom of the Spirit to work for justice and lasting peace in our nation and throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the splendor of the risen Christ may draw many of the faithful to surrender their lives in service to God's people as priests, deacons, and religious sisters and brothers. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Officer Evans of the U.S. Capitol Police and for all who have died, that the light of the risen Christ may shine upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of life, author of love, in raising your son from the grave, all of creation has been reborn. May the life and love of the Paschal Mystery, which we celebrate today, be a constant and lasting reality in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Joy is calm, Easter time, sing we far and wide, see the star hold aside, Christ our Lord is risen, bursting from his prison, let the sound, 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 bring around, round, round, and the song now rebound, Christ the Lord is risen. Joy is calm, Easter day, join the dawn's orange ray. Christ our Lord, rise our way, from our tomb now breaking, Satan's power shaking. Let the song, song, song echo long, 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 shout it loud, sing it strong. Oh, 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Matthew, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. For those receiving communion, please remain in your pew and wait for the direction of a guide. For safety, we ask that you receive in the hand rather than on the tongue.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. You know, my friends, first of all, all of you here this morning, and also those who are with us by way of live streaming, we all have so much to be grateful for today on this great feast of Easter. And one of the great gifts the, that we are certainly thanking God for today is our Archbishop, because today is the anniversary of his anniversary of being named Archbishop of Washington. And certainly we want to wish him a happy anniversary and a happy Easter as well. Thank you for your kindness. Two years has flown by, and I couldn't be more grateful to God for giving me you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through, this, through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia.